Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm starting the video by going cycling. So here I go. This is my bicycle. It's a Batekia and I bought it almost 30 years ago. The bike has a full Campagnolo chorus group set on it. And at the back I changed the derailleur with a Durace one to get that nice click shifting. The rims are Campagnolo aero rims and these were one of the first aero rims to come out on the market. The bike's made in Italy and almost everything on it is Italian. I have a Regal saddle on it, but I may change it to a Brooks someday. I have a CatEye microcomputer and I used to have a heart rate monitor strap beside it here. My shoes are Italian Diodora. For such an old bike, it rides just awesome. I have put so many kilometers on this bike. I can remember one year when I was racing, I put 12,000 kilometers in the summer on the bike. And most of those were racing. I would say 70% of the kilometers were race miles. The bike still has the original fork crowns on it, but I did bend the forks in a crash. So they've been replaced and they've all gone rusty. So I'll have to paint those up white, make it look a little better. It's got a lot of wear and tear on it, but uh, for a race bike that I raced for almost 10 years, it's done really well. Today I'll be meeting up with my brother and some of the people I used to race with, and we're going for a 40 kilometer ride. It should be really fun. I'll bring the GoPro along with me and try and get some shots of the ride. I'm down here in the park waiting for the others to show up. I think I'm a little early. I'm so excited. <laughs> it is a beautiful morning today. It's going to get quite hot and humid today up I think to 32 degrees Celsius. This bike was a state-of-the-art bike back when I bought it. Now it's a classic bike. Some people call them spaghetti bikes because they're made in Italy and the tubes are really thin like spaghetti. It's kind of nice in the park here. They close the roads Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to car traffic. So it's open to cyclists and pedestrians, runners, walkers, so really nice. Yeah, a nice morning. Here comes our first rider. Glenn on his Benotto. Hey, Glenn. Hey. <laughs> the Benotto is here. The Benotto is here. I've arrived. This is Glenn. Hi. How you doing, guys? Here's our second rider, Tony, coming in. Hey, Tony. I got a little wrench on me. I usually carry one. Over my knee. Oh, my goodness. Here comes our last rider. Look at the chrome. This is Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, How's it going? Oh, 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 look at those aero wheels. A trek. Here we go. The ride is starting. Some people want to go further than 40 kilometers. Others, I don't know. Like we got a flat tire. Yeah, we got lots from of team having trouble with it. Team Trek. Team Where's the uh, support wagon? These are nice rims. Uh, he's got the yeah. Now, 
52 kilometer ride and we, we were at a good pace. I don't know what speed we averaged but I would think around 30k per hour. I'm hungry and thirsty. All right, let's do some bonsai work now. I ate almost half a watermelon after the ride. It tasted so good. It was juicy and ripe and ah, it was fantastic. So the first thing I want to do today, I watered all my trees when I got back also, but I want to check the mail and see if those baobab seeds came in the mail today. I'm going to take a different bike today to go check the mail. My old bike from the uh, late 50s, early 60s, I think. About the same age as me. All right, let's head off. It's not very far away. It's not 52 kilometers, that's for sure. Here it is. Now, let's get out the key. We'll check it out. Usually when I do this, I get nothing. It's nothing today. It's wait a minute, there's a delivery notice. Alright, I'll head downtown to the post office and hopefully these will be my baobab seeds. That will be exciting. Part two of the video coming up. Yeah, I don't know what kind of seeds those other ones were. I was looking online and people made suggestions. I looked and I don't know. Maybe someday we'll find out if they germinate. I was reading the fine print on the shipping notice and it said the item wouldn't be available until tomorrow. So I'll have to wait. We'll go on with something else today. So we'll put the bike away again through the secret entrance here. There we go. We've got lots of flowers happening in this area. We got lilies here. They're called the Michigan lily. Really nice. And these are like, here they are. These are like mock oranges here. They smell really nice. And then over here, we've got another kind of flower all over there. They're almost done on this tree, but uh, the hummingbirds really like these flowers. There's a good clump of them down there. And then we've got elderberry flowers up here. Lots of them. So this area is just full of flowers, which is good. It attracts a lot of native bees and butterflies and moths and all kinds of hummingbirds. Okay, let's get the bike away. I'm going to have to find a tree to work on today then. Shouldn't be hard, there's lots that need work. Um, yeah, there's lots that need work. There's so many that it's hard to choose. Well, um, some of them are quite complicated like that the cedar avatar grove it needs pruning but uh, I think that's going to take a lot of time there's a lot of new shoots coming on it I think we better tackle something I wonder maybe this elephant planting that would be a nice one to tackle today while we're, you know, in the theme of baobabs. All right, I'll get that out and we'll start working on the elephant diorama. I've got the elephant diorama out and you'll see some yellow flowers here. And those are the flowers from the sedum. They shoot up and then they flower. They're really nice. I don't think they smell. I'll try smelling them. 
No, I don't smell anything. They sure look nice. I am going to have to do a lot of thinning of the sedum. It's overgrown like a jungle, which is kind of a neat look, but uh, I don't think we want it that overgrown. The tops of these trees need pruning too. You can see there's a lot of branches that are all overlapping each other. So that can be sorted out. A lot of the new shoots can be pruned, shortened, and pinched to make them look better. I'm uh, thinking this is a, uh, there's a grasshopper climbing up there. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking with this elephant diorama, uh, these cedars are kind of styled to look like acacia trees, but they're starting to look pretty good by themselves, especially from this view, the main tree. So I'm thinking of redoing this landscape and replacing the cedar trees with my acacia trees over here. The acacias are developing really nicely and they're growing very quickly. So I think, you know, it's just a matter of time before they start to look like acacia trees. They've certainly thickening up down below with the trunks and they're growing really nicely. A bit of pruning will work on getting that flat top shape. So I think that's the plan eventually to replace the cedars in the elephant diorama with acacia trees. And then the cedars, I think will go in their own sort of Canadian type landscape. So I think, you know, I think they're mature enough and looking good that they would look really nice as a little clump of trees. So that's, I think my plan for the future. My first step will be to clean up the sedum, pruning it short, maybe leaving a few clumps, making it look less of a jungle. I'm going to start by cleaning up all the sedum that's overhanging the edges. So just coming in and ruthlessly cutting it away. I don't want stuff cascading over the edge of the pot. It just looks very untidy. Unless, you know, I guess if that's the look you're going for, maybe it could look okay. But generally, you want to see the pot. You don't want to just see a mess of plants. But, you know, maybe if you had it on a slab or something, it would look good. Kind of sprawling out. I'm sure there is a place for having sprawling sedum. I hate to prune off these flowers, but I'm going to have to. It's another hot day today, no rain in sight anywhere. I watered all the trees at the orchard yesterday and it took me, took me about two and a half hours. Uh, there's a lot of trees there and I gave them a good thorough watering. So they've, they've done well, you know, considering we haven't had rain in like three weeks and all we've had been having hot, sunny weather. They did really well. So I think, you know, most of them probably won't need much water next year, especially if we mulch them more. The mulch really helps. You can see where they're mulched really well. The soil is moist underneath, even after all the drought weather we've been having. I can't believe how this sedum grows. If you ever want a ground cover and you live in a hot desert environment, this sedum's the stuff for you. And you can keep it pruned quite short. It's just a matter of, you know, coming in every few days and pruning it and it'll divide and ramify and it'll make a really good ground cover. And then if you want, it'll even flower. I should plant some in a little pot as an accent plant because it roots really easily from cuttings too. So I'm just pruning away all the stuff at the front here so you can see into the landscape so it's not, you know, all sedum and nothing else. I do want to be able to see the elephants. You can hardly see the baby down there. This moss is also growing really thick. 
It's a little brown now, and that's because of the heat. I've had sun like every day for three weeks now. No rain and high temperatures up in the 30s. So I'm going to remove the elephants so I can get in there. Comes the baby. The proud father. And then I can get in and prune all the sedum away. I, I'm just pruning it short for now. I may end up ripping sections out of it so it doesn't look quite so lush in here. This is supposed to be my watering hole down here. And you can't see anything. It's just full of sedum. been staying warm at nights too we've uh, hasn't gone below 20 at night so it was kind of hard to take it first but I'm kind of getting used to it now sleeping okay at nights you get to the point where you know 20 degrees at night feels cool I'll keep pruning away here these uh, sedums are almost the size of my tree here Okay, here goes the flowers. I got to prune those away. They're so nice. Yeah, no smell to them. The sedum will grow very quickly again in the summer here. So you can prune it quite short and it'll just rock it up again. As long as the weather is sunny and warm like this, sedum does really well. So I think I'm going to clean out this, uh, what is supposed to be the watering hole here getting rid of all the sedum from there so I'll just pull it out by the roots I find this landscaping one of the funnest parts of bonsai is trying to make your landscape look miniature and adding features to it and things like that it's really fun there I've got this tree's trunk exposed so you can see it from the front now, now I better do this back tree back here too it's hard to see this one so I've got to clear the sedum out. There's some rocks in here too that you just can't see. They're totally hidden. I think I'll leave a clump of sedum in between these two trees. So I'll have to prune the flower off, shorten it all, kind of make a rounded kind of a bush shape. Looks like everything's watered well in here. That's good. I was kind of worried with all that sedum. I was wondering how much water is getting down into the soil, but it looks good. It's Everything's well watered. I'm getting quite a pile of sedum here. I'll continue working away, leaving some sedum kind of bushes, and the rest will be moss and sand. So I'll keep working away at it. I want to see the base of this tree, the main tree here. And it's kind of, there's a lot of sedum in front of it. So I'm gonna clear out that sedum and maybe leave, you know, a bush-like clump to each side of the tree. And this tree here is probably my oldest tree I have. Um, it's been in training as a bonsai for about, um, I think almost 50 years now which is pretty amazing. Each time I prune up this landscape, it looks different. I don't, you know, go back to my old videos and see what it looked like before because that's part of the fun is, you know, working with what's grown in different places and having that kind of freedom to do whatever you want. I think I want sand up front here, so I'll remove all this sedum growing up near the edge of the pot. I'm going to step back and have a look at it now and see how it's coming along. I'm not so keen on this clump of sedum here. It kind of blocks your view of the three trees behind here. I think I'm going to get rid of that. It might look better over to this side, but I'll try just taking this part off of it first. But I think it's just too much in front of the other trees there. 
I've also got kind of a moss bush there that doesn't help. Maybe just a little more pruned away and I'll just leave a little bit in the corner here. I think that's enough. Yeah, that's better. I don't like this moss bush here though. I'm going to relocate it. So I'm going to take it off like that. I like that better. I don't want it so lush underneath the trees. I want it more like sand underneath the trees. And I'm not sure where I would put this moss bush. I don't think I want it up front or anything. I think if anywhere it would go, maybe back there. Yeah, that looks good beside that rock there. I'll plant that right there. That should be good. A little less lush here. Now I gotta pull out all this moss that's growing in between all these trees. They kind of have like a cool root base and I don't want it all covered up with moss. I want it to look like it's just barely hanging on in the desert. It's looking better. I still think it's way too lush all back in this corner so I'll, I'll work on that pull out some of the sedum back here I don't want it growing underneath the trunks I, I just want the trunks to kind of be isolated nothing to take your attention away from them because they are really cool trees I like them I better prune up this bush here Here's a look at the front of the planting now. I do like the trees without the moss in the corner there. I think that looks much better. Um, I think back here, I want to get rid of all that moss and have just sand there. I just kind of want patches of green, like small bushes rather than, you know, this lush landscape. So I think, Removing most of it and just keeping little clumps here and there is the gives a nice look to the planting. I cleaned up the area back here, stripping it of all the moss and sedum. And I think that looks good. Having the sand come down to the watering hole, I think I've got too much moss in this area, so I'll pull that out too. I think this moss bush has to go. I don't mind a little bit of moss around the rocks here. I think that looks good, but, you know, this area gets trampled on by the elephants, so I don't want much greenery in that area. I think I'm going to remove the moss up front here too. If you look down kind of at eye level, it just kind of blocks your view of the elephants and the watering hole. So I'm going to remove those just not necessary yeah I think that's gives you a clearer view of everything here's a look at all the sedum and moss I've removed it's quite a bit and here's a look at the planting now so it's looking a lot more desert like or drier the landscape I've still got a lot of work to do though um, I don't like this corner back here it just looks too much. Um, I think the area with the trees looks quite good, the base of the trees. Yeah, this might be too much here and I think this is too much here. So I'll reduce those down. I've got the landscape cleaned up now. Well, I think it's looking pretty good. It's looking dry and desert-like. I think the next step, I'm going to place the elephants back in the diorama and see how it all looks. All right, here I go. I'll put the male elephant up here. Mother here. And maybe the baby here. Maybe the baby slightly behind the mother. I think that looks quite nice. The baobab seeds are in at the post office and I'll be picking them up tomorrow. So I think in the next video of this series, I'll prune up the trees up top 
and finish up this diorama and I'll also get the baobab seeds started so I'll get them soaking in water for 48 hours. Let's have a look at the elephant penjing planting. There it is. There's the watering hole which doesn't have any water in it. Yeah, I think it's looking quite good. It's time now for today's update. The first update for today is my smaller Ficus religiosa. It's growing in a 3D printed pot that's made to look like a marble pot. And I've got a new sucker growing up and I must have come up from the root, I think. The only other possibility is that a piece of it fell down there and grew as a cutting, but I don't think so. I think that's a sucker from the roots. So the top of the tree is looking really good. I do have one dead branch at the back here, right there. So I'll prune that off today. The branch died off over the winter in those cold, dark winter months. So I'll prune it off right to the base. Like that. It still looks fine without it. The next update is my Bougainvillea. And I was trying to grow this tree as a straight tree or you know, a formal upright tree. And the plant had other ideas. It wanted to grow in this curvy pattern. So that's fine with me. It is getting a flower up top, which is really nice. Looks like there's more flowers forming in here. So I imagine in a, you know, a couple of weeks, it'll have a lot more flowers and be looking really good for the summer. My princess earrings bonsai is, the flowers are really hanging down now. If you see them over here, you can see them all hanging down and it looks like they're about to come out into flower very soon. So there was one that flowered up here quite a while ago that I showed before. But yeah, it's got lots of flowers hanging down. So I'm really excited. It'll be, I think, quite a sight when it all comes out into flower. Now that the warm weather of July has hit, everything's growing like crazy. It's just, look at this ficus. It's just, the canopy's getting huge on it. My chaffleur over here is growing like a weed. All my jades here are really liking this weather. My jade forest and my jade cutting back there, really filling out with foliage. So that's good. That's all for part two, growing a baobab from seeds. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. I was reading the fine print on the shipping notice and it said it wouldn't cut. I am going to have to do a lot of thinning of this of whatever it's called. Sedum. <sighs>